Hi, welcome to my FTL ship colouring tutorial. This is going to act as a part of, well, a part of one, and an introduction on how to use GIMP for, or how I use GIMP um, to do FTL ship colourings, and just a bit of familiarisation with it. So we've got the Kestrel, which is on the display now, and down this side here, I've opened all the files that are generally associated with having a ship run in FTL. So these are opened as layers, which basically stack on top of each other. We have a wee eye symbol to show if you're viewing it or not. And these are all the images required apart from one, to, that you'll need to load a ship into FDL. Now, the one image we're missing is the mini ship image. So I'm going to open his layers, and then go to the file, and open that. So I run this from GOG. It's an image. Now, the mini ship file is in a slightly different place, so rather than being with the rest in ship, saying customize UI. Uh, we are looking for mini ship Kestrel. There we go. So we've opened that as another layer. And you see, because it's at the top, it's on top of the layers that we've got. So here's the first thing is, what have we got? This is what you see when you select the multi-ship image in the ship selection menu. We have a shield, we have a floor image. Now that's generated by Superluminal. You could generate it yourself and add it in, but it's much easier just to use the one generated from Superluminal. There is a cloak image and the base image or the ship's hull. We've also got the gibbet images. So, there's generally six of these. You can make as many as you want, really. Um, I tend not to use six if I can get away with it, if it's my own design. But six is the standard that's on all the in-game ships. They're already there, like natively there. So... We've got a bunch of different um, tools we can use to manipulate these images. Pencil, free select, triangle, and the canvas, which is here. And you can alter that through canvas size. So I could say, actually, I want this to be a thousand pixels big. And then you can center it in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a black layer. So I've just called it black, it's not actually black. If I hit Shift B, which is the bucket fill tool, and then whole selection, it colors it black. Now why that is important is each ship has a drop shadow associated with it. And what do I mean by that? So when we, I'm just going to drop it right down at the bottom. base there. Oh, sorry. That adds a new layer. That can create a layer grouping. And that moves layers up and down. Yeah, raise or lower. Duplicate layer. Merge. So if I wanted those to be one layer, I could merge it down. Uh, add a layer mask. I tend not to use layer masks. I've only got like a cursory understanding of how they work. Um, and when I have used them, I don't really get the results I want. So I tend to avoid that and delete there. So as you can see, the outline of this ship has got a color around it. That's the same with all the gibs. 
that glow is called a drop shadow and you can control that how you like so if we open this up I'm going to remove it and then reapply it so this wand which is the fuzzy select tool or hockey U select a continuous region based on color and this threshold sets the maximum color differences so if I select that it will select all the drop shadow of the ship and I can cut that away Now to deselect the area, I'm going to select none. Normally I control shift A to remove that. So now we don't have a drop shadow on it. We'll add one and that can be the end of this introductory part. In filter, there are different options. So under light and shadow, there's a function called drop shadow. So let's try and, that's maybe a bit redder than it was. That's about what it looked like. You can choose any color. Um, you can have color palettes just like from, choose it from different wheels. So we'll just go with this for now. Now that's offset uh, by 20 pixels. And this means that uh, the X and Y values are linked. So when I decrease this, they both decrease. And that acts as an offset on the drop shadow. So now that we've got that underneath, you can see it's centered on the ship. So I'm going to make it a bit bigger and a bit less opaque. Oh, grew it too much. So let's just grow it a little bit. And there, it's got a drop shadow again. Now, uh, you can play around with how, how you want. Um, just, I'm going to undo that and add a different one. As an alternative to using that, actually, um, what we'll do is we'll duplicate the layer. So we've got one on top of each other. I'm going to right cl click and alpha to selection. So that everything on the alpha image is selected. And then I'm going to grow this by 10 pixels. And then I am going to add a gradient color. So also in group G. So I've got a custom gradient that I left behind from previous, but let's pick a rainbow color and then I can put that in and just hit enter. So I'm going to deselect all the air, control shift A. So now we've got a nice color there. I'm going to make it a bit um, more opaque, this one here. So if I drop that down, you can see through it better, basically. And then I'm going to go to up the top, filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to blur that to probably, yeah, seven is fine. Basically, so that I'm getting the effect I want. I could make that brighter again. Um, but there, that's a nice groovy drop shadow on it. And there, that'll serve as your introduction. So we've seen a few features in GIMP. We will use more later, and I'll explain them more in the proper tutorial. But these are your basic... Um, file you'll need to edit or create and this is just about how you go about it okay see you next time